Did you know that asking the question, is this a sin? And you know, this can be whatever you'd like. But did you know that that can actually keep you from growing in your relationship with Christ? And why do I say this? And what is a better alternative to ask? Well, I'm Charles. Grab your coffee and let's talk. So how can this question, is this a sin? And again, this can be whatever you'd like, actually keep you from growing in your relationship with Christ? Well, I find that the answer is this, when it has taken you as far in growth as it can. You know, kind of like riding a bicycle on training wheels. I mean, everybody starts learning with training wheels. But training wheels can only take you so far. I mean, they are useful and they are needed for a while, but then you outgrow the need for them. And if you don't, well, you never actually get to the full enjoyment of riding a bicycle. And the same is true with this question. So what do we move on to? And, and why do we move on to it? Well, as relating to God, I think is much more profound than riding a bike. Let me change gears a little bit and leave that illustration behind and progress onto one that, well, I think will help me make my point just a little more clear. See, asking this question is a bit like taking cough syrup for that nasty, lingering cough. Oh, it may suppress the cough for a little while, but the fact is that the cough is consistent and it keeps coming back, and that's evidence that there's something deeper going on, that the cough is but the outward symptom of a deeper illness. You know, one that the cough syrup just isn't going to cure no matter how much you drink of it. See, asking this question is like only taking cough syrup when we learn that it's not addressing the true sickness. Let's go one level deeper with this. See, once we know that the symptom isn't the underlying problem, to only ask this question, well, it's rather like trying to stitch a cut while ignoring the piece of glass still embedded in the wound. See, if that is all we do, we might go get some stitch work done that, you know, doesn't leave a scar or at least doesn't leave a bad scar. But then the glass is still there and the glass is still cutting away on the inside, causing other symptoms to arise down the road. See, shouldn't we now be focusing on having that piece of glass removed? I find that that is the way of true growth. So how do we focus on getting that glass removed? Well, this may sound just a little bit counterintuitive, but we don't. Now, you might be saying, okay, Yerks, how are you going to get that glass out if you don't focus on it? Well, I find, I believe in the KISS method of doing things. You know, keep it simple, Stu. Silly. <laughs> you focus on the doctor alone, the one who can actually take the glass out. See, focusing on the doctor, focusing on God alone. See, make the developing of your relationship with him your top priority. Then he actually goes to work as the surgeon who is safely extracts that piece of glass. And it's quite amazing how it works. No more glass, no more symptoms. <laughs> now, a couple of quick notes about this. He is a very skilled surgeon and he doesn't want to make matters worse by merely ripping out that piece of glass, okay? He doesn't want to make the gash in your arm any bigger than it absolutely has to be. So the surgery does take time. I mean, growth takes time. Building relationships just takes time. So this extraction isn't going to be completed as soon as you may have liked it to be. But if you keep focused on him, keep, <laughs> but if you keep focused on him, he'll not only safely extract this glass, he will also completely heal the wound. Note number two, see, as he is a very good surgeon 
after that first piece of glass has been removed, he may well make you aware of other pieces of glass that still remain in the wound, ones that the pain of the first piece kept hidden from your view. So he is a patient, patient surgeon, and he wants to remove all the glass in order to fully heal your wound. So that is why this question prevents growth. It doesn't actually address the glass, what is really wrong. It doesn't help remove the problem, the one that prevents true healing from occurring. So what then are some questions that are better alternatives for us to be asking, ones that actually help us stay focused on the doctor so he can remove the glass? Well, I, I think a very good one to begin with is also one that follows the KISS method. How can I fully include Jesus into my daily life? That's pretty simple, right? And yet I truly find it to be quite profound. And then, you know, from there, you could move on to something like this. How can I demonstrate my love for Jesus, my friend and doctor? then you might move on to something like this. Will doing this hurt my friendship with Jesus? Is it going to be a betrayal of all he has done for me this far? Will doing this be a slap in the face of Jesus? See, all of these are much more profound types of questions. For now, these questions focus on Jesus and not yourself. They are ones that actually address the issue as it really is, that being a matter of love. Are you loving God with your entire being and your neighbor as yourself or not? Are you still only looking out for number one? Well, there you go. There you have it and there it is. You now know why asking this question, you know, is this a sin? Well, you know why it can actually get in the way of growth. Well, just like permanently attaching training wheels can get in the way of a good bike ride. Just like not focusing on the glass leaves you permanently wounded. And you also know some much better questions. And you know why they are better. So until next time, love simply, love wisely, and love well. Get to know your friend and doctor. Take one more step towards enjoying that French press style of faith, one that is simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. It is the one that is full of abundance, the abundance of life Jesus came to give. Now, if you like this video, please share it with a friend. For good coffee and good conversation, loves good company. And click that like and the subscribe button and then make sure to click on that gray notification bell that turns up and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each time a new conversation is posted. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for watching. And let's chat again soon.